Hi, everyone. I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with my colleague, Richard Nieva, who is a senior writer covering technology out of San Francisco. Richard, nice to see you. Hey, thanks for having me. So we're talking about the story that is in Forbes around how Google fell behind so much in the AI race. Let's just start with um, how surprising is this for people? They've been talking about AI for years. What's the gist of what you discovered? Yeah, it is surprising because Google was actually very early here. Um, in 2017, they wrote a paper that's kind of become foundational for this this new crop of apps. Um, and without it, you know, it seems like um, ChatGPT itself couldn't even exist. Um, and yet, they they they've been beating the market, and so uh, it's surprising. Um, and people are kind of wondering what happened. And there's there's a few things. Um, from our reporting, um, it seems like Google kind of had some bad memories with past launches that has contributed to um, uh, the company being slower to ship AI products. And um, a lot of the talent that um, in AI that that uh, has kind of uh, generated this um, this research is uh, has left the company to start their own companies. Well, it's interesting. Let's unpack this a little bit because I know there's a lot of attention right now on on Bard and ChatGPT in this coming battle, and we'll get to that. But I know that Google did have some missteps along the way. One that comes to mind certainly is um, these issues around things like facial recognition technology, racial bias. I mean, if we go back, how much did that create some kind of, uh, you know, hesitation internally given some of the bad press they got early on yeah it did it did contribute to an environment where um things were kind of fraught you know there was uh one case where um you know google terminated uh two leaders of their ethical ai unit um after they had written a paper criticizing uh, biases in large language models that that google was using in its in its search engine um, and then if you go back even even further, Google um, caught some blowback when um, it was training its its facial recognition software um, and contractors were were using um, training data um, from homeless people with uh, with a quote unquote darker skin um, to to try to make the models better. And so you know there are these kind of things that that have popped up popped up in the past that, have probably made uh, Google a little bit more hesitant to to move forward here. Now they've brought out the big guns. I think you use the term code red. Uh, when did this sense of urgency and paranoia suddenly set in? Right. So ChatGPT came out uh, in November, and it just kind of took the world by storm. Um, and internally at Google, I think that really kind of um, Created this this sense of urgency where you know the the uh, the founders are now involved again. They hadn't been Larry um, and Sergey are back, right? Yeah, they hadn't really been involved in the company um, on a day to day basis since 2019. Um, and earlier, we re uh, Forbes reported that um, Sergey uh, actually filed his first request for access to code in years. Uh, related to um, to Lambda, it, uh, this generative AI chatbot, and so uh, it's it's a big deal for Google internally, and they're really really trying to to play catch up. Now, they've got the resources. Obviously, let's switch a little to this um, announcement about Bard. It had a little bit of a a Me Too feeling in that very neutral sense of the word. Um, how ready is this? Is this, I mean, is this seen to be a real competitor to chat GPT? So just from the way things were going, it, it, it did feel like it was a little bit of, of a rushed announcement. You know, um, Microsoft had their uh, their event yesterday, and this came out the day before. Um, and so, you know, they're starting out with what they're calling a, a lightweight version of uh, of Lambda that that's being used to to um, to kind of underpin this technology, and so it's it's unclear like what uh, you know how robust it will be, um, and they're starting out uh, by only making it available to early testers. So it's not going to have um, the training data going into it that um, 
you know, that a fully released product would have like ChatGPT. Is this the killer app? I just want because generative AI has the power to impact everything. I know we're talking about two chat bots here, but you know, I think about Bing and Google and we think about this battle over search. Is that really where um, the most immediate and profitable area of exploiting this technology is going to be? You know, that's the big question. Um, and it's, it's, it's certainly something that's gotten Microsoft's attention. You know, they actually are releasing something that, that will be able to be used. Um, and Google is actually um, taking this seriously enough where it's tweaking its, uh, its search engine itself. You know, this is kind of the cornerstone of this trillion dollar company. Um, and it's making tweaks that could affect you know, ad revenue in the short term in hopes that um, this thing will be the future. So it's 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 tough to tell, but these companies really seem to be going for it. It's it's interesting because when I think about the value of, say, a chat GP, it's, it's natural language. It certainly creates perhaps better searches. But my impression of the um, advantage that Google has had in this situation over Bing has really been an advantage that's about data and about access to information. And it's amassed such a you know powerhouse of data. Is it really at a disadvantage now because this chat bot is going to make search perhaps more interesting, friendly, and accessible to us? I think that's where Google's real advantage is. You're right. Is is its um, its mass of of data. You know, it's this company is 25 years old, and that just means that it's got you know 25 years of, of data, um, and that stuff is really what's going to make the uh, this technology work better. Um, so I think that you know Google was beaten to market, but no one is counting Google out. Um, it, competitors are are very very aware that you know once Google really really steps in, they can make a big big splash. So before I let you go, Richard, I think one of the things that's interesting you you spoke to a lot of people who are at Google, and I know you speak to people in the tech industry in general. Um, Google sort of had a bit of a mixed impression publicly in recent years. It certainly is one of the ones that we go for when we think about regulation and being too powerful. There's been some employee unrest. In general, the culture at Google, has it changed or did you glean any insights there that might have impacted where it stands in this whole AI race? Yeah, I think it has changed. You know, it's it's a huge company. Um it did split and, up. It was Alphabet, and then it split up into yeah. its component parts. So that's right. Yeah, and you know the the the, the change to Alphabet was kind of, um, in a way, the company trying to deal with with some of that that sluggishness, trying to um, put the parts of the Google that make money uh, in a different place from these other moonshot bets that are maybe more experimental and and are trying to think of new ways to make revenue but um you know it's it's a company with over a hundred thousand people um so it's just you know it's big which means that there is more bureaucracy than it had before um and you know that stuff can kind of get in the way of innovation if if you let it and so i think that all contributes to um, the situation that Google is in here. Well, where we, we should point out the fact that Microsoft is taking a major investment in open AI. So it's not like Microsoft has generated this innovation itself. It's going out. So obviously acquisition is important. Um, I don't know if there's anything um, on the radar that we should be looking at in the next several weeks as more of these products start to get rolled out. What's on your radar to gauge the state of the battle yeah well google just made um a, a big investment in anthropic um which is a, a competitor to, to open ai so uh these companies are really kind of gearing up their their war chests um and so where they they make further investments is certainly something that we'll be we'll be looking at and uh trying to gauge how that stuff will will um help them in their ai battle and, and more to come from Sergey and Larry, which is interesting to see them involved in this fight. Thanks for joining us, Richard. Thanks for having me.